Well, in the meantime, the Biden administration issuing the country's first artificial intelligence executive order today, covering issues like safety and privacy and ordering a report on potential labor market impact. The Commerce Department will play a central role in the wide-ranging order that touches various agencies. I spoke with Commerce, Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo today in an exclusive interview, and I started by asking her about that key role in this rollout of regulation. Take a listen. So President Biden is really taking bold action with this executive order because fundamentally he realizes that in order to harness the benefits of artificial intelligence, we need to mitigate the risks. And that's what this is all about, making sure that AI is safe and trusted. So the Commerce Department does play a very central role in this. We will continue to control uh, artificial intelligence semiconductor chips. We will be setting all of the standards around what is safe, you know, what is adequate watermarking, what is adequate red teaming or testing. And then also the Bureau of Industry and Security, which reports up to me in the Commerce Department, will be collecting survey data from companies around the results of their safety testing. So it's, as we were talking before we got on, this is very comprehensive because it has to be in order to protect the American people. I mean, you mentioned harnessing the benefits and mitigating the risks. Do we yet know what all the benefits and risks are around this technology? I don't think we do. Here's what we do know. We do know that even in the past several months, the technology is developing at a more rapid pace than we thought. And so we're starting to see, you know, the full capability of these models. Having said that, we're still in the early innings. You know, a year from now, we'll be so much further along than we are now. And that's why what President Biden is saying is, the United States should lead the world in defining what safe AI is. And we should work with our allies around the world to define what safe AI is. In fact, tomorrow I'll be headed off to the UK for the UK AI Safety Summit. But we need to put these standards and precautions in place right now so that uh, as this innovation continues at pace, people don't get hurt. So how quickly can you do that? And I think just as importantly, because so much of this space so far has been self-regulated, um, what is enforcement actually going to look like? So ultimately, uh, Congress will have to act, and you hear senators working on it already, and they will have to act in order to have something be enforceable with teeth, with the force of law. But already, you know, we this spring, we've already convened in the White House leading AI company CEOs, and they've already signed up for commitments, and we intend to hold them accountable. So, for example, in this executive order, the, the president directs the Commerce Department to require companies to tell us what are the safety precautions they're putting in place and to allow us to judge whether that's enough. And we plan to hold these companies accountable. Now, you've been in the room for some of these meetings with tech CEOs. How much of, how much of this EO is based on their feedback from those AI summits? Uh, we've certainly been listening to uh, AI companies, by the way, not just the biggest, but a lot of small companies, a lot of startups. But we've also been talking to academics, um, civil society, privacy experts. So I would say very much informed by industry, but not just industry. It raises the questions or the debate around what implementation of rules of the road in the U.S. on this industry look like and how you balance that against being able to compete against a China on the world stage geopolitically and economically. How do you walk that tightrope? How do you ensure that innovation can still move forward? Well, that's exactly the right point, by the way. R right now, the United States is the hands-down leader in the world. We have the most sophisticated artificial intelligence semiconductor chips, the most sophisticated AI models. Uh, we lead the world in innovation in AI. And of course, we want to stay there. And we have to make sure that we don't allow our most sophisticated technology to get into the hands of the Chinese military or the Chinese government. Uh, that being said, it's in no one's interest for AI to develop in a way that leads to dangerous outcomes. And I do hope that whether it's China or any other country takes the responsible measures to make sure that, as I said, we harness the benefits but protect ourselves and the world, quite frankly, from the risk. Are we in an AI arms race with China? Do you see it that way? 
I do not see it that way. Like I said, the U.S. leads the world. This is a technology that is that is for good. You know, when you think about productivity enhancements, fraud protection, all of the biotechnology uh, applications, finding cures for cancer. This is amazingly, you know, good stuff that should be done with AI. We just have to be certain that uh, we, as I said, we harness the benefits but mitigate the risk. It is a week where Apple's reporting earnings, where the Chinese smartphone market is in focus. We had Huawei release a device recently that uh, raised a lot of questions about its own technology, where it was able to uh, get the capability to manufacture the chip that powers that phone. Um, how do you balance restrictions and enforcement of those restrictions versus the possibility of retaliation on U.S. companies that operate in a country like China? We cannot compromise as it relates to our national security. So what is very clear is we do not want to deny China technology, including semiconductor technology, that it wants and needs for its economy. Having said that, we cannot allow China to have our most sophisticated semiconductor chips for use in the Chinese military. That's where we've drawn the cut line. Uh, I think we drew it in, in an excellent place. But with respect to the balance, that is the balance. We have no interest to hold down or hold back China's economy. We have clear interest to hold back their military capability, and there's no room for compromise in drawing that line. The, U the UAW and GM just announced a tentative deal. This brings the last of the auto strikes to an end. It's really labor's moment right now. How are you factoring that into your own policy plans at Commerce as you do work to do all of this nearshoring and, and increase U.S. activity? We strongly believe that it is possible to manufacture in the United States competitively. Um, and by the way, AI will help with that. You know, incorporating artificial intelligence into the way we manufacture makes the U.S. even more competitive, whether that's cars or chips or EV batteries, et cetera. So we're very focused in the Commerce Department in reshoring uh, manufacturing to the United States.